posted a video to TikTok a second ago. What What is your TikTok strategy? Like, what are you guys trying to do? Um, I mean, we haven't really been able to promote, I mean, the new song much yet. Um, because you, do, you don't want to put it up yet? No, we just couldn't for a minute. So now we are full steam ahead. We can post whatever we want. You so. couldn't for a minute. What does that mean? I mean, we were just um, in a transition. So. Oh, got it. Okay, I'm going to do it. You have to get closer to the microphone. Okay. We just did it. <laughs> really? <laughs> um. So, okay, it's been a while since we've talked. I guess yeah. since probably you were at my last studio yep. in the other house. Like the other house. Pre-COVID. It was pre-COVID. Um, somebody like that just came out. I think, Mike, and this has happened a bunch since because I think you kind of set the trend. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but wasn't Tanil the first person to bring a guitar up? Yep. And I think people heard yeah. that episode, and they started showing up with instruments too. And they were like, "She well, started the trend." Yeah, they were like, "We'll just bring our guitar." Yeah. And we were like, "Well, we don't, we don't really have anywhere to plug in." And they're like, "Well, other people have done it. You are other people." Yeah. You set that trend. <laughs> oh, and no. I, I remember you coming up, and I was like, "Dang, she was cool." And so, we have a rule that we can play no more than six seconds of a song, right, Mike? Five. Is it five? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Apparently. The podcast lawyers come at you. Oh, no. So we're going to play five seconds. Do we have a clip of the new single? We do. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me hear five seconds of Jealous of Myself. I'm jealous of myself when That's enough? We don't want to go to jail? <laughs> we'll hear another five seconds of that in a second. So you say you, you, you've you transitioned. Mm -hmm. I don't know about this. Yeah. Uh, what? Management? Label? Which, which part? Uh, label. I actually... Um, I'm now on Dreamcatcher Artist, so my manager and I have worked together for a long, long time. And it was always a dream of mine to be um, at an independent label uh, where I could have ownership in my music and full creative control. And, you know, as we kind of decided that we wanted to transition to something new, um, they created Dreamcatcher Artists. Oh, and, cool. Um, so now, yeah, I get to be a big part of my music and have ownership and all of that, which is something that I've dreamed about since day one. <laughs> it's always stressful. And I say, oh, I just moved agencies and I'd been with my agent CAA for uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'd never had another agent and I still like them and had a great relationship with them. But my agent who is, was, my, she was my agent. She was, she's awesome, but she had gotten so big in the news world mm. where when we started, we were both just like kids and I was like, dang, you're in New York in the news world, but I need somebody who's... The so I opened it up and said, okay. So I moved, and I'm now at UTA, and I had all the meetings, and it was a positive experience overall. Mm -hmm. But it's stressful to have to change one of those fundamental parts of your community, your professional community. Yeah. Stressful for you to change? No, I felt like it was um, the best option for me. And also a lot of those core people that were a part of the beginning of my career and a part of the success of somebody like that, they're all still with me. You know, they were they were really um, just super loyal and wanted to continue to be a part of the team. So I pretty much took everybody with me that, that, you. that had um, been very pivotal in my career. So it's been great. Mike, give me five seconds of somebody like that, but not a, not a tenth of a second more. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> My friend was going to kick the door in. and <laughs> It's been so crazy with this music, right? Yeah. We, it's it, wild. Forever it was you can't play more than 30 seconds. Then it was, okay, you can play up to like 15, but you have to talk over it. So people can't actually take it from yeah. the podcast and, and own. And now it's like five seconds. Five seconds is so, I mean, you can't even get a full hook in there. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. Whenever you're new to a label... What, especially a label that's something that's new, right? Mm -hmm. They're making you the first part. What does that mean? What's the responsibility for you now? How's that different? I mean, I just get to be super involved in everything. And I'm a little bit of a control freak. And I do like to be involved in a lot of the decisions. And um, I have been super involved uh, with my managers in the last, I think we've worked together for like five, six years. So it's really not that much different. I just actually feel like what I say has power and can... I can do what I want, which is awesome. <laughs> Have you been on the road a lot? Yeah. Playing shows? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, what, what? Where? Like, what kind of shows? Oh, my gosh. We, I mean, we did the full um, summer circuit, you know, and then uh, we were over in Europe. What's we that went, like? Uh, incredible. <laughs> um, I have a friend that will go over there every year, and he, he's a pretty successful artist, and he goes over, and he's like, you know, it's a little humbling because 
the shows aren't as big. He said, but they're dedicated, diehard, and I'm like yeah. building a base over there. Do you feel like that's the same thing for you? Like you're you're building fresh over there? I feel like it's bigger over there. Really? Yeah. When I go over there, it's like, I mean, we did our first real kind of headlining tour over there, and it, they were sold out, packed rooms, and even though they were small, they were, I mean, diehard fans. It was really really cool so after that european tour we went to bahrain and kuwait and played for um wow. uh the the soldiers over there and it how was how do you get there incredible. what's the plane like do you strap in with a helmet like because <laughs> i'm sure it's not a delta flight it, it, i mean actually yeah you kind of just fly in and and then you're you know you're driving a couple hours to get to where you want to go but um it was definitely an eye-opening experience like i slept in bunks one night and it was very different than than what I expected, but it was so eye opening, and I just have so much respect for everyone over there. Do you get in a Hummer? I mean, like you land. Talk me through this. <laughs> you land, and they go okay. And are you like running out under gunfire or no? no you're good. No, so, uh, you're super safe when you're on the. Is base. there a Wetzel's pretzels in the airport? <laughs> is there a, it's a? Actually, there was like there was canes in the airport. Wait, in the Middle East? Yeah. They had a Cane's chicken? Yes, they had a Cane's chicken. They have all of our, like, regular chains over there, which was crazy. But we didn't get to see a lot of the cities. We were mostly on base um, and getting to tour around and see what those guys and ladies do every day. So you drive for a couple hours. And mm-hmm. what kind of car? Um, a van that the AC couldn't even keep up with. It was, like, 140 That's good, degrees. though. I like that. That's what I need to hear. I don't need to yeah. hear it was all comfortable. I don't, no, need, no, no. I don't need you to get out of and get in the Lexus it, and then drive. No, it right. absolutely wasn't comfortable. We were very, very hot. All of our shows were outside. Um, yeah, it was it was an experience, but one that I'll never forget. Any alarms great. go off in the middle of the night, and you're like, get down. No. Oh, you should invent one of those stories. <laughs> I invent one. Oh, yeah. I mean, one. there was, um, when we were in the dining hall, um, an alarm went off that it was too hot to be outside, that everyone needed to um, take their daily, like, hour break or whatever. So it's not nice. I feel like they needed one of those here, Mike, for part of the summer. Like, yeah, it's too definitely. hot to be outside. Uh, you talk about your team. Is your sister part of your team? She is now. Yeah, she's doing day-to-day management. She's moving here in January. It's From really Canada? Cool. Yeah. Is she excited? She's very excited. So she's doing management now from Canada? Yeah, she started part-time like a month ago, and so she's just been, yeah, she's texting me and being like, you need to do this today. <laughs> so, Have you guys ever worked together? We haven't, but... Honestly, it's a dream come true for me because I boss her around anyway. So I'm like, she might as well get paid for it. True. <laughs> and where does she live right now? In Vancouver. I bet Vancouver's pretty cold too. Sometimes it's beautiful. Huh? I've been there to visit her quite a few times, and it's awesome. I'm honestly sad for her that she has to leave there. <laughs> Is French the language of Vancouver? No, it's mostly English. Yeah. What am I thinking of? What's the uh, Quebec? Hmm. I wasn't thinking of that, but I just learned that. Yeah. Okay. So Montreal. What? What's the really French one? Is that the most French one? I though? think Montreal would really? be the most French. I call French. it Montreal. Is that Montreal? Is that hillbilly? I don't know. Mm. I've only been there one time. I can't confirm. <laughs> Do you ever, you ever get back home? Yeah, Did every you? once in a while. And and what is home like? What's what's your town like now? I mean, my hometown is awesome. When I get to go home, it's like I have a lot of my friends and family in town. Last time I was home, I did a big concert. Like, they've never done this before, and they just had me as, like, this headliner. And it it looked like a festival. Like, it was crazy how many people showed up. And there's, like, 10,000 people in my town, and I swear they were all there. Um, So it's awesome. And then I have a little nephew. And so when I go home, it's just, like, all I want to do is play with him and hang out with family. The radio station in your town, do they play your songs first and foremost? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they better, right? They've That's been awesome. awesome. Yeah. Actually, you know, when you, like, are in school and you get to do the career day where you get to go, like, hang out with somebody and see what they do, I went to the radio station, and I hung out in the radio station for a day. Back then? Yeah. Was it because you thought you wanted your music played on the station or because you wanted to work in the radio station? I don't know. I just wanted to do something in music, and, you know, they were always so supportive. I don't even think I had anything that they could play at that point, but I just wanted to see what the behind the scenes was like. When you were nine and they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? What did you say then? I said I wanted to be on American Idol. <laughs> For real. I was like so obsessed with Kelly Clarkson that I would go to school wearing the little like number thing on my chest. Like I was, like you were auditioning? Yep. You wouldn't even go to the finals. You no, would, you, it was your, just, your, I'm your auditioning. Your dream was to wear the number. Yep. <laughs> Did you ever try out for Idol? No. For any of the shows? No, because I think when, I don't even know being Canadian if you can now. Um, you can. Can you do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think back, back when I was like thinking about it, I don't think I could. 
Did they have Canadian Idol? They did. But they don't anymore because it wasn't Carly Rae Jepsen on Canadian Carly Idol? Carly Rae Jepsen, uh, one of my favorite bands. I don't think they're even together anymore. But yeah, they were on Canadian Idol. And Who's your favorite? one of your favorite bands? Well, it was Headley. They were a band. Um, Are they not Canada. anymore? They're not together anymore, I don't think. so. Who Who's your favorite band now if you were to pick your favorite? And it can be anybody. Yeah. But don't pick somebody to be cool. But pick them, like, because <laughs> there's a difference. There's your cool favorite band, right. and there's your real favorite band. I mean, I don't even know what a cool favorite band would be. I feel like I'm not that cool, but um, I grew up listening to Paramore, and that's just, like, still one of my favorites that I go back to all the time. Here's a story for you. I was in Las Vegas, and I was, I was disheveled. Not because I don't drink, so I wasn't yeah. drunk or anything, <laughs> but I was just like, it was, I get dehydrated out there really quick. I don't sleep well. I have to work. If I'm out there, I'm working. And I, I'm just kind of lost. And in those casinos, they have different places to get in different elevators to go to different places. Mm-hmm. So I get in this elevator, and I'm like, oh, crap. I said, I don't have my key to get up there with this girl. She had a key. And I was like, and I don't have my headphones. And she, like, gave me her headphones. It was Haley from Paramore. Mm-hmm. She she wasn't Haley from Paramore then. She was yeah. just a girl. But she was so nice to me in the elevator. And... I got out, and I think someone said, that was Haley from Paramore. And I was like, oh, wow, I, that was just somebody really nice to me in the elevator right now when I was, like, complete struggle bus just trying to get anywhere. <laughs> That's my only Paramore story. Really? And it was her being a normal human and being super kind. And I don't know if she still does, but she used to live here. Yeah, I think she was originally from Franklin. Yeah. A lot do, of those Do they still were, live here? Do you know? I don't know, but, I mean, I went through a very punk phase. I had purple hair the whole thing and <laughs> was just very into that kind of music. So Correct me if I'm wrong. Because I think just from remembering our last time together, were you like singing in the backyard or something? Yeah. Yeah. Right. The the first time that, I mean, I was always singing and performing as a kid. Like I was just super extra. And so the way that I was like, not discovered, but like started into music um, was I was just belting out some Shania in my backyard. And my neighbor was like, she came over and said she thought I had a great voice and that my mom should maybe do something about it and thankfully she put me in voice lessons I mean she asked me she's like do you want to be in voice lessons and I said absolutely I want to do this and honestly I remember being eight years old being like this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life this is my career you know did you ever feel bad that other kids in your class did not know what they wanted to do because I did I knew what I wanted to do yeah immediately that to me was super tough like all of my friends in high school I already knew what I was what I wanted to do, and I was already working towards it. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm already like five years ahead of like, I, even if I went to college, I'm like, I'm I'm already doing what I want to be doing, and I can just like keep doing it. Versus, you know, some of my friends that just went to school doing arts and science, like they had didn't really know what they wanted to to do. And to me, that's it's a blessing and a curse to know what your passion. Is, yeah, I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Because I've always known exactly, and I think it kept me from opening myself up to other things. Yeah. But I've always been extremely dedicated to making sure I had, had the best shot to get the goal. Yeah. Right? Not that I would get it, but just give me the best shot. I'm going to work hard. You're 16, 17 years old. I guess you're getting close to graduating high school. What do you think the step is after you graduate high school? Like, what in your mind, what's going to happen at that time? Well, I had already been in Nashville when I was, like, 15. Doing what? I was signed in a duo. I did not know yeah. this. What was the duo? Um, we were called Taylor and Tennille. Um, we how, were both 15. How? What year was this? 2009. So I guess I wasn't here yet. And so you were signed by by uh, like a management company or a label or what? Um, it was called Art House Entertainment. And so you moved down here at 15? I was pretty much here um, every other month for like weeks at a time. And it's crazy. You and Taylor Swift had your own duo. duo. That's crazy. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Uh, as if... Uh, if you could tell that 15-year-old something, though, now, because you've definitely been through a lot, yeah. what would you tell that 15-year-old now? I mean, just keep going, because there's so many things that are, it's never just going to be smooth sailing. I'd be concerned if it was, to be totally honest. Like, there's always going to be things that are in your way, but um, you're going to be successful, and it's going to be great. What happened to Taylor and Tennille? Um, Well, I was like... 17 I guess and creatively I mean it's the same thing that I'm going through now is like creatively it just wasn't the direction that I wanted to be going and um thank god I spoke up at that time and said that that wasn't quite where I wanted to be were you guys grinding like going to doing any radio stuff no it it was very early early on uh we were signed and all of that stuff I mean we recorded we had songs ready really like all of that yeah 
When you come down at 15, do you just homeschool then down here or did you just check out? I actually like did most of my school. Either they would send send it with me before I left or I would do Skype. With? With the teachers would put me on The Skype. same teachers? Yeah. So you would just Skype into the classroom mm-hmm. and everybody else yeah. was... was what, <laughs> what kind of student were you? Very, very... Um, I was a perfectionist, so... Great. <laughs> yeah. You almost have to have that if you're going to not be able to be there, right? Because yeah. it's easy to be distracted when you're not there. Yeah. I, I I mean, I was hardly there, but at the same time, I was like, anytime... I, I was just... I needed good grades. That's all I wanted, so... Did you finish high school? Yeah. And so you graduated high school. Did you go to college? No. You went to College of Hard Knocks, which is the college of <laughs> Nashville. Com- yes. Nashville College. Uh, so after high school, did you move down fully? Did you ever go back after 15? Yes. Like, so you did. You moved yeah. back home. Uh, so after the duo was like no longer a thing, I went home and honestly, I kind of just lived like a normal, very normal um, teenage life. Like I I used to be in dance. Like I was in dance for years of my life. And then um, I decided I wanted to be a cheerleader. So I for the last for my senior year, I was a cheerleader, and I just got to hang out with kids like normal. And then all of my friends went away um, to college, and I just worked in my hometown and saved up to move to Nashville. When you were a cheerleader, was it just to be a teenager, or was it you thought maybe you'd be a cheerleader no. out, out of high school? I No, I never really was like, oh, I'm going to be a cheerleader. But I am not really athletic, but I was like, this was my kind of like team sport. Like, I wanted to be a part of that. So in that year, what do you do? Because you'd, you'd been down. You had a taste of it. Mm-hmm. It's a business. It's also fun. It's also awful. Like, there's a lot to it, right? Yeah. You go back. Are you singing at all, or are you just kind of cleansing the palate? I was a little defeated. Um, it was, you know, it just wasn't the experience that I thought it was going to be. And, um, yeah, I guess I needed some time. I was still training classically, so I was still singing, you know, competing, doing all of that. But I wasn't out singing as much as I had been before. Will you explain to me what that means? Because even working on American Idol, I would get these kids and be like, I'm a classically trained singer. And I would just go, I, cool. I, yeah. But I didn't know. I didn't know what that right, What does that mean, classically trained? I mean, I was doing exams, singing, like sight singing and... um singing operas and in different languages and so like old school old school old school music and then also learning via paper uh literature yep. or like yeah mm. i i literally like i i can play piano but the only reason why i was still in piano um was so that i could take my theory exams for my voice training because i had to have theory to to take those exams too is theory why music is like it is i never studied music my excellent voice comes naturally (laughs) (laughs) honestly i don't know i don't get theory like i i have tried to understand it and i just i don't quite get it especially in the in the piano space if i handed a piece of paper with a bunch of notes you can make it work if you played me a chord i might be able to like sight sing it i don't even know what question i'm asking is i know so little about it (laughs) so i'm like if there are a bunch of notes i took piano lessons for a bit so when I was like 18 or 19, I would go and I would do little bits of stand-up comedy at club shows, but I was working. Mm-hmm. But I would do all these songs and I would use other people's music, like parody stuff. And I was like, I don't want to use other people's music because I know I, there's, a, just, there's a life on that and yeah. I can't own it. And so I went and bought a guitar to pawn shop and I bought a chord sheet at Walmart, po- these big poster, pap, slap, pap, yep. pap. And I bought it and I learned like, C, G, D, A, A minor. The easy ones, right? Mm-hmm. With the very, very limited on the bar chords. And that was all my music knowledge. And if you handed me some, I would have no idea what that is. But I thought, okay, I'm going to take piano lessons and I'm going to learn so I can see it. I was an adult. And so I had this lady coming over and she was like, she was mean. She, I think she thought I was like seven. She was like, you do your lessons? Lady, I'm paying you. Yeah. And my mom's not here. <laughs> so let's be cool about this. Yeah. And so I practiced. But I think learning it older, maybe I just had too many distractions, like bills. I don't know. <laughs> but I never could I, I could never see the notes. I could never do what naturally came to some of my friends. And I say naturally because they were just they were good at it. Yeah. They had to work they had to work hard. But they were also they were good enough at it to give them enough confidence to keep going. With music, did you do you feel like you kind of accepted it easier? Or has it always been a process for you? Uh, vocally it's always been that's always been my like 
true love is like just singing all of the other things i learned guitar to accompany myself i didn't learn guitar because i wanted to be a guitar player so you learned guitar because you were already singing you had studied vocal yeah was how hard was that to learn oh guitar for me was way easier than piano like i remember i learned by like you said like guitar charts my mom had this old my i had my grandma's martin and my this old literally paper of all of these different chords and i just i looked up taylor swift songs and th- you know at the time there were like three chords in those songs mm-hmm. so i was like how many of these songs can i learn and i just yeah i learned i had literally blisters and my fingers were bleeding and i was just obsessed with it your grandma had a martin she did so she was musical yeah what what what, what did she do how, how did she play music i mean my mom and my grandma both played a little bit of guitar like it was never their like passion but they they both could i think my cousin actually got that martin <laughs> where, where did oh you did your grandma die and leave it no but she just gave it to my cousin to learn and i was like dang I she gave it without dying but... what the crap i don't want that thing <laughs> i know i want the martin <laughs> so but where, where would your grandma play like how would how did she learn to play do you have any idea i have no idea actually i it, i'm gonna guess it was a church thing or a just you know wanted to have a guitar and, and sing along you ever sing in church i did what kind of songs was it like now if we go there's a whole band and it sounds very contemporary yeah. however when i grew up that was the kind of church i went in because i was either in a baptist church or a pentecostal church yeah. and there may have been one person with a guitar but it's a lot of hymns is that like what was your church like i went to catholic school and went to catholic church so it was all um you know hymns there was no do you still know them some of them me too <laughs> yeah and like i'll hear like a, a little snippet of something random and i'll know it all and I'd be like, how do you know that whole song? I'm like, man, like I knew that book that we had at Mount Pine Baptist. Yeah. I, knew, I, pre- I knew pretty much all the songs. Yep. I remember a lot of the childhood songs too. Like we used to go to vacation Bible school <laughs> and like all of those little kid songs were just looking back on them now. They're hilarious. Like I just think it's so funny that we were just sitting in pews singing that all summer long. <laughs> you ever think about writing songs for kids? Uh, No, I mean, I've just never, maybe if I have kids someday. Well, uh, then I feel weird because I don't have any kids. I did a whole album of kids songs. <laughs> I did a kids book. And I, I don't have any kids. Do you like kids? Do you hang out with kids a lot? I don't know. I'm not going to say I hang out with kids a lot. That would be a terrible answer to that question. I mean, do um, you have kids in your family? <laughs> not particularly. You know, I did a kids album because I thought that kids music kind of sucked. Yeah. What I would hear. And I was like, oh, I can also teach the kids stuff. Yeah. And so just for fun one day, Eddie, my partner with the Raging Age, was late. And so I wrote like this planet rap. <laughs> and and he was like, what is that? I said, well, I've taken some uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot, you know, who used to do Baby Got Back. And I've kind of taken some of these elements. I did a planet song, and it was like, we do the planets, Mercury, my very energetic mother just served nine pizzas, and Pluto sometimes is a planet, sometimes is a dwarf planet, sometimes isn't one at all, right? All right. <laughs> so I started the whole thing, and it's like a really high pitch. Mike, do you have, can you play the planet song? I can pull it up. But I did this kid, I did one song, and then I thought, oh, Kids liked it. I said, yeah. okay, well, let me write some other stuff that's not um, so immature. It sounds a bit contemporary, and kids can learn. So I did mm-hmm. like 12 or 13. And Cracker Barrel bought the whole thing. It was that's incredible. It was amazing. I couldn't believe so, it. So like, you don't have to annoy the crap out of parents. I still did. Action. <laughs> no, I still did. Like this song, though, it is, and you could probably play this. What are you going to do, sue me? Am I going to sue me? Are you going to sue us? Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Doing the kids' record was a lot of fun and very, very basic. And I, yeah. it really helped me be like a comedy music writer. That's so fun. Then I did a kid's book. Yeah. And still no kids. So it sounds creepier and creepier, Mike. <laughs> she, she was like, You have a lot of kids? I have, I have none. <laughs> did a kid's book that was successful. And then it was mostly, I wanted to do a book about kids fitting, not feeling the need to fit in, mm-hmm. like to, to, they can stay who they are. I, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't fit in with anybody. Yeah. I don't know if you were a cool kid or not. They seem pretty I cool. Mean, no, I always felt like I wasn't. Like we said, like when you know what you want to do when you're older, it kind of alienates you from people a little bit. And I had a great group of friends, but it was always just, yeah, like I always felt a little on the outside. Were people mean to you because you were the performer? No, I was, I think I was more mean to myself. Like I thought nobody, I thought I wasn't good and that nobody would want to hear me do that. So. Were you good? Yeah. What would you tell that kid now? That you're freaking good and you should sing at the talent shows and, and do all of the things that you want to do. Not be held back by, you know, stage fright. Do you still have stage fright? hmm When does it hit you? It'll be random. It's not all the time. It'll just be, 
you know, if I build it up too much in my head, that's when it gets to me. What do you build up? Like, what kind of performances to you do you think you build up the most? Like, when I'm only singing one song or I'm singing oh, yeah. an anthem or something like that. Like, it's just you have that one little, like, three-minute amount of time to, like, make it good. Anthem's tough. I've done some anthems and I, yeah. <laughs> both? Have you done the uh, American and Canadian? Yeah. Do you ever do them? Do you ever do them both at the same time? I have, yeah. You've got pressure from two countries now. I know. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> are they as hardcore in Canada about you not messing up the anthem as they are in America? Yeah. I mean, if you mess it up. And there's also like some of our lyrics changed. So then it's like if you sing it the Wait, original Wait, they changed way. your lyrics? Yeah. They changed. Um, what the? It was like in all our sons and then they changed it to in all of us. And so depending on oh, what version that. you sang, people get upset either way. Yeah, because if you sing the new one, they're like, oh, you, you're just, yeah. Gen Z. Oh, you're not respecting the old the ideas of the country. But if you sing the other way, the, it's like, why are you just singing about sons? Yeah, I mean, I sang it the new way, and I felt like I got backlash from people being like, you're singing it wrong. I'm like, well, no, it's like, it's actually this way now. So, <laughs> Which one's harder to sing? Uh, the American anthem. Is it because it's so high? Yeah, and also just, like, I didn't grow up singing it my whole life, so it's just not as natural, I feel like. Yeah. When's the first time you had to sing the American National Anthem? I was, like, 15 in my hometown. I sang for our uh, baseball team, and they had, because we're so close to the border, we had a lot of um, American players. So. You grew up near the border? Oh, like an hour away from the border. How hard was it to get across the border? Could you have just driven across no problem? Was yeah. Oh, my mom used to take us um, <laughs> back to school shopping in Minot, North Dakota. I know my. I've been yeah. there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So. Okay, so now I kind of know where you are mm-hmm. if you're going into Minot. But you can just get across the border, no problem? Yeah. They just let you ch- come in and chill? Yeah, you can go across for a day and go shopping and hang out. Dang. Mike, do you have that song? Yep. Prepare, your, prepare, <laughs> yes. prepare yourself. Go ahead. Easy. My very okay, energetic. Yeah, you can skip part, the, the talking part. Nine pizzas. I forgot this is on the beat. Oh, yeah, you have headphones. Very energetic mother just served us my pizza. Started from the start at planet number one. Me, my good friend Mercury, it's closest to the sun. A little fast and no so hot and slightly colored gray. And right behind it is Venus, planet two, you say. The Roman goddess of See, beauty. That's did. awesome. I just said, it's not awesome. I appreciate <laughs> you saying that. But I was just sitting there and I was like, I can't believe Eddie's late again. Started writing up this yeah. th- this dumb little planet song, and away we went. There you go. So let me ask you this: If this is uncomfortable, let me know. But you and Tyler mm-hmm. still still together? Yeah. Everything great? Everything's great. Because the last time I talked to you, you guys were together. It was a little new, little newer. It's very new. Yeah. Yeah. And so what's what's the deal there? Um. Yeah, we're together. We live together. Um. He's in the music industry now too. When we met, he wasn't. He was trying to get in. Um. Did he come with you the first time? No. I I've met so. him, though. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Yeah, okay. Um, he does day-to-day management for um, Nico Moon. So if you've yeah seen each other around. But he's, yeah, he's in the industry. We're both very busy, very career-driven, which is awesome. Has that made it harder that he's in the industry? No. I think what I always thought would be weird is if I was dating a songwriter because I feel like they would be, like, very judgmental of, like, your music versus, like, he's, almost, he's very um, just business focused so he'll always have good ideas he's just like it's like free advice it's great <laughs> i don't know free advice man i get too much of that <laughs> Mike. I, don't know. I get too much free advice uh, i want to play this clip of you singing blue in 2005 oh boy this is you as a kid it has almost four million views on tiktok <laughs> how old are you in that clip i don't know Maybe. Wow. When you had that vocal control at 12, 13, 14 years old, that's crazy. Yeah, that was one of the first songs that I ever learned outside of classical music. I just remember my mom, she was like, you should learn this song. And we just had a cassette tape of it. And I, being the little perfectionist, determined child that I was, I just like went into our laundry room and, and put that on repeat until I could do her little flip thing. And um, the flip thing, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my grandparents actually came over a couple days later, and my, I just remember my grandpa saying that 
like, is that the radio? And my mom was like, no, it's Tennille. And they couldn't believe it. So that was just like a cool moment. And that was my grandpa's favorite song. When you performed that at the Opry, mm -hmm. did you perform that at the Opry because you knew you could re-viral it? No. <laughs> because that's cool, right? You show yeah. yourself as a kid, you show you you. Why, why, why that at the Opry? Yeah, I mean, I just, I, honestly, I didn't even know we had some of those videos of me as a kid. And um, when I played it at the Opry, I just wanted to, you know, play a classic, awesome song. And that was one that I had been singing my whole life. So it was also, um, you know, kind of a tribute to my grandpa as well. We were talking about TikTok earlier. And that video obviously has a bunch of a bunch of views on it. Uh, the other one that I saw that had a, had a bunch of views was you in the the guitar. Were you bedazzling a guitar? Oh, yeah. You said bedazzling a guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, that one had millions of views. It did. Why do you think things catch on on TikTok? I have no clue. I think it's one of those situations where you just kind of have to, like, throw things at the wall and I see what sticks. Because there's never been, even with all of the, you know, guitar bedazzling stuff, like, I could probably post guitar bedazzling every day and it wouldn't still get that same amount of views. So it's like whatever catches on it's just it almost it's a natural growth so yeah you never know i feel like you could post the same thing five times and every time you get a different result and yeah. views and what the algorithm is going to do that day and we just had a meeting with my show and i pull them all in my office and we're talking about tiktok and i just had a big I, but prior to that I had a big meeting with some of the people at tiktok and you know they're not going to share algorithm it's a secret recipe yeah but they do tell you they, at least they told me they said hey there's Post videos like crazy. You know, with, with Instagram, there's there's definitely a formula to how many to post on your feed. Mm -hmm. And once you hit a certain threshold, don't post this many. But TikTok, they were like, just post, post, post. And I was like, but how do we know? Because if I have something really good and it doesn't catch on, what do I do? And they were like, keep posting. Post. They didn't say post it again, but I felt like they were saying post it again, yeah. honestly. And so what I'm getting to with that is some people that I know, they will post a song. And if it doesn't catch on on TikTok, they're like, oh, it must not be good. Let me move on. Mm-hmm. Where I feel like if you tried three or four times, even though it feels maybe a little cheesy, maybe a little cheating, that then that would be like the accurate barometer of if people like it. Yeah, I mean, you got to play that game. If everybody else is doing it, you have to, you know, find creative ways to share your music. and. But don't give up on it immediately. Yeah. And post it again if it does sense. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and who knows? Like another clip of that song mm -hmm. might catch on more than the one that you posted. There's just so many opportunities there and that's why i'm excited to start sharing jealous of myself and really like just trying out all of those different things i can kind of just go rogue now and <laughs> so you didn't post stuff because you were still in the process of figuring out what you owned what you could own what you might own it's yeah like we didn't have the master yet like we hadn't fully recorded it and i just i didn't want to um release something that i wasn't sure if i was going to be able to put it out so was that whole time stressful for you yeah, I mean, it was the last year and a half has just been very tough trying to figure out where I was going to go creatively. And when I found the song, it was actually on TikTok. This is one of the only songs that I haven't written that I'm releasing. What do you mean? Because I'm going to pull up your TikTok in a yeah. second. I didn't just grab my phone to be rude or like, <laughs> no. or like text a friend back. I no, just, no, no, no. Um, so, yeah, I was scrolling through TikTok. And at the time, I didn't follow Emily Wiseman. And I have no idea why this showed up. It was a God thing, a timing thing. And it was this song. And she's an incredible writer in town. She, you know, has had a ton of success. And I've always been open to outside songs. I think best song always wins. And unfortunately, I just, like, hadn't really been pitched a ton of incredible songs in the past. So I was just not really even looking, but scrolling through and... Her, she came up singing this song called Jealous of Myself, and she just sang verse chorus. And at the end, you know, she did her little TikTok thing where she's like, what artist wants to sing this song or whatever? And I heard that hook and was like, dang, I wish I wrote that. So I just commented the little hand up emoji and was like, I'd like That's to sing it. that. Yeah. And I reached out to my team. I, I sent the, the TikTok over and was like, I want this song. I think it's really great. I haven't even heard the whole thing. I've only heard a verse and chorus, but um, I think this would be awesome. That's how I got it. That's a pretty cool story. Yeah. Mostly it's 
somebody puts out a song, it gets a bunch of a bunch of views, and you decide what to do with it. But you actually found a song for you to cut that way. Yeah, that's the first I think we've heard of that on yeah. this, right? Like, yeah. Were, were they... you hesitant when you heard the full song? Like, oh, maybe I didn't want this whole thing. Well, oh that would, no, that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be funny. But no, honestly, when I heard the full version, it just like. I had this incredible gut feeling of like, okay, this is it. Like, I need to fight to have this song. And, um, you know, it's stacked full of incredible writers. And, uh, you know, I just, I think there's awesome songs being written every single day in this town. And I'm so open to those outside songs because I know people are going to outwrite me. You have yeah. a lot of followers. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And do you have more followers on TikTok than Instagram? I think it's about the same right now. Really? Yeah. Golly, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, you have two, 210,000 followers on TikTok. Let me do a little, let me see what you're doing over here on TikTok. Okay. So what do you want to post on TikTok? I'm totally in t TikTok mindset right now because I just had yeah. three meetings about it <laughs> and I was talking to TikTok. And so like I'm kind of reevaluating yeah. stuff myself. Like what is your goal? What do you want to put on TikTok? You're motivating me. Um, I just want to share who I am, which I also feel like, some of the stuff that I'm sharing are like videos that my fans have made. Like they are so awesome and they'll take things from, you know, anytime I talk about mental health or anything like that, they're always super um, engaging and, and supportive of that. So I'm always trying to do that. I'm trying to be real. I'm just, you know, trying to post my music. I'll go live doing my makeup before a show because I do all of my own stuff and um, I'll go live dazzling things or making one of a kind pieces that I'm gonna give away to a fan or whatever it is I just I kind of throw it all in there it's a very creative space for me one of the things they were telling me was don't worry about producing stuff or editing stuff yeah like the stuff that does the best is the stuff that is just like real deal like the like most raw post yeah. it raw as possible like find that balance of raw and good mm -hmm. like you just want to don't want to post garbage right but like good raw stuff is the best because it's what people want to see now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have Be Real or if you use that at all. It's a, it's a new social media, newish. And so I've been on it for seven or eight months or so. And that whole app was based on social media and you can't edit anything. Mm. It's throughout the day, it'll give you a little alert. All right, show what you're doing now. And it shows you and what you're doing. You can't edit anything. It's like a picture or video of right then. Oh, that's cool. Call your friends. Well, now TikTok has started. Well, they stole it. So now tick, TikTok has that too. Do you, ever, do you ever get the lightning bolts and it's like, all right, TikTok, show your, what you're doing. Have you seen no. those yet? Maybe so, I don't have the update. <laughs> may, or maybe just, you know, you don't have a lot of followers like, you know, like me. I don't <laughs> yeah, brag. exactly, I, I right? Don't, no, but now, you know, my, my whole point with that is, and I'm looking at some of yours, I mean, I think you, that's what you're doing, right? You're showing you. Yeah. It's just you. Mm -hmm. And like, here's one that's 24,000. Let me see what this is. Oh, it's, you be it's another Bedazzle one. Oh, is it? <laughs> Dang. People apparently like to, yeah. <laughs> Do you, are you artsy things. in every way? I like to bring arts into everything that I do, and it's so people are always like, "How is that your real last name?" I'm like, "Well, it is," and I also just love. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about that part of it. Can you make clothes? You ever tried that? Yeah, I actually bought a sewing machine um, and have been messing around with some things, but I'm not quite good enough yet. I just recently started embroidering, and obviously, I paint and. All of that kind of stuff. Scrap and I make clothes. A scrapbook? No, I can't scrapbook. I don't even know what that is, though, I'll be honest with you. I think well, of, like, it's a, like a, uh, we used to call them, like an, what, what do you, yearbook? That's what I think scrapbook is. Like, you just take pictures yeah. from different years. It's like and like pictures and buy yeah. a bunch of different colored paper. I don't know. <laughs> you can still play your song, right? Your number one? Mm -hmm. It shows? Yeah. There's nothing weird about that. No, no, no. Actually, um, with the Dreamcatcher artist deal, um, they bought back all of my master's. So we have all of my music. How much that cost? Could I bought it? Could I? Yeah, could I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you have to talk to my managers. <laughs> I had to buy because I had signed a deal to do a co couple comedy records with a label, and they were great. And but inside of that deal, they also had part of my touring, mm -hmm. part of my merch, part, and I didn't need them to promote anything. I have my own promotion. So I was like, guys, I don't. This is not cool. I don't yeah. want to do this anymore. And I was, and so I had to buy it back and i'm gonna tell yeah. you what it ain't cheap yeah i mean it's hard once you're in a deal um it's really hard to get out of and sometimes you outgrow it or whatever it is and i've just seen so many of my friends recently people that i know people that i've done radio shows with that um are involved in in deals and then it goes great for a little while and then it doesn't and you're stuck there so. hey mike what i don't know when we're gonna 
but this is going up because her song goes up October 14th. Mm -hmm. Are we after that? Uh, the day before. Okay. Yeah. So this will be out the day. So tomorrow yeah. or whenever, <laughs> uh, Jealous of Myself will be available for everybody. Yeah. So am I hearing it before? Correct. Could. Okay. It's a time machine right now. <laughs> We're in a time machine. Yeah. And then you're planning to go to country radio like uh, January of next year. Yep. Man, that's a long time. I know, but we've actually, you know, I just think with the transition and everything going on and, and this musical direction is a little bit different. And so I just wanted to give it some time to to grow. We're going through the holidays and all of that. I just didn't want to, you know, force it to radio too soon. Also, I'm an idiot because we're, I mean, it always feels like it's April or May yeah. to me. <laughs> Mid-October, by the time it's, then it's Thanksgiving. No, nothing happens after Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> so you don't want to be doing crap after Thanksgiving. No. So that makes sense then. Well, you had a number one during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which, gr great, right? You get you have a number one. You worked hard for it. It took a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. you, you hustled your butt off. I saw it. And that's the positive because you always have a number one. But during the pandemic, it was a, definitely a weirder time it was for music. Very weird. I had also just released an album. And I, like, really never even got to play those songs, you know? Um, I know a lot of artists went through that where they just released an album and then pandemic hit and you never even got to play those songs for fans be out there and actually see how they've connected and that's how the number one was for me like I had heard it on the radio and I knew that people were connecting with it but it wasn't until one of those first shows back where I actually saw that wow this had an impact and that people were singing every word back yeah but that's cool because you really don't know n no and, and like that's the thing about social media and all that it's like you can't tell what's real like you really don't know how much you've impacted people until you go and see them in person. So, I want to talk about songwriting for just a second and how sometimes you have to be uncomfortably vulnerable <laughs> or it's just uncomfortable for people to hear you sharing your thoughts and emotions, meaning yeah. people that you know. So you and Tyler have been together three years? Yeah. Okay. If I remember correctly, you had been with a previous boyfriend for many five, six, seven, eight, nine years, whatever it was, a long one before yeah. that, right? So are there still songs about that that you have to sing now that your current partner hears and is like, dang. I think he's confident enough that he doesn't think too much about it. I wouldn't be. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be at all. I mean, there it's what's really funny is that like he was like, why are you so drawn to this Jealous of Myself song? You know, because it's like a breakup song. And um, there have been times where I've come home after writing a breakup song. And he's just like, are we good? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we're good. I just still have some healing to do, apparently. You know, if that stuff comes up in a in a writing session, it's like you just kind of have to lean into it and and know that I also know now that I'm not only writing for myself. You know, I can draw off of, you know, my my siblings experiences or my friends or you know my fans there's just a lot of people in my life that inspire me so i like to write about everything any more shows till the end of the year yeah we've got a few um here and there doing a lot of um like radio stuff we're getting back out there are you writing yeah i just actually had my first writing session in like four months today the day. no um friday did you write anything good yeah do you ever write something and you're like dang that song's good then you go back and listen to it a month later and you're like dang that song is not good you, sometimes that's why I really like to sit on my things because I, I, I really don't like to... I feel like I'm a very good judge of my own music and I have to let it sit for a minute. Like, I can't just be super overhyped about it. I have to listen to it with fresh ears and be like, was that actually good or not? Mm. Yeah, I start... If we're writing something funny, it's not funny anymore. <laughs> After about 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have to just convince myself that originally it was funny and then finish it. And then I have to wait two or three months sometimes yeah. to go back and go, oh, that was funny. Or sometimes I'm like, golly, you are not funny. Like, that makes no sense at all. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, we thought we were really... One time I wrote a truck song and <laughs> I went back home and played it for my boyfriend. And he's like, you know, that truck that you just mentioned, yeah, that doesn't exist. And like, it would never have that amount of horsepower and like all these things. And I was That's super, funny. yeah, I was like, okay, dang. Cause I wrote it with two other girls and we just really, we thought we were doing our truck research, but we weren't. <laughs> That's funny that it wasn't even a real truck. Like in no yeah, way, he five, was like, five uh, wheels. I yeah. forget what it was. It was like a 
two-tone Tacoma or something, and we looked it up, and it was like somebody in their backyard like painted a two-tone Tacoma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have this song. Are you working on a broader either like EP or album, or is that the idea to yeah. for, ne- for next year possibly? Yeah, something for sure. I mean, I, I really just got back into writing and have had this you know fun idea to kind of bring in some like 80s sounds which you'll hear in in jealous of myself like with the keys and stuff i just wanted to you know bring a different sound to what i've been doing for a long time but kind of mesh it all together so well if people are listening to this right now this song's probably out because this, <laughs> this is coming out the day before yeah but most of the consumption is done in the first few days of, of this podcast and so i encourage everybody to check out jealous of myself it is up Unless it's unless you're a super rabid fan of this podcast, and then you have to wait like probably like sixteen hours or so. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm excited that you kind of figured out where your seat is, mm-hmm. and now you're in it, and you're moving forward. And I'm assuming you feel kind of reinvigorated, like I do. something to prove. You got a team Absolutely. to prove it with, that kind of thing. I have an awesome team that has worked hard and accomplished so much during a year that I felt like we were. You know, we kind of had our hands tied a little bit. So I'm so excited to see what everybody can do. And we are still, like, just full steam ahead. Next time I see you, how's it going with your sister? That'd be interesting. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Maybe we'll bring her in here next time. (laughs) That'll be interesting. All right. You guys follow at Tenille Arts. So I'll spell it for you just in case. T-E-N-I-L-L-E-A-R-T-S. At Tenille Arts on TikTok and Instagram. She's got a new song out. She's a whole new person. She's like three inches taller. The whole, like, the whole different person. It's crazy. Um, and I hope you guys check out Jealous of Myself that is out now. Tanil, good to see you. Thanks so much, Grant.